This meeting is being recorded. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with Taylor from Life Goal Investments. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me, as always. So uh, as we teased at the end of video number two, we're going to talk about the average investor just having an amazing, life-changing year in 2022. Uh, so what are the numbers? What's going on? Yeah, blockbuster numbers. So so let me let me give you a uh, prior context, and then I will. JP Morgan just published the stats for what the numbers are this year, year to date. Um, but further context, and we've talked about this until we were blue in the face because we think that the average investor just misses the buck in a lot of different scenarios. So the average investor over the last 20 years, on average, has uh, produced a 3.6% return per year. 3.6%. If you look at stocks, bonds, everything, REITs, small cap, large cap, it doesn't matter what it is. Everything outperforms that. The S&P was up for that same period of time, 9.5% per year. So that's over the last 20 years. So you know that the average investor is not a good investor to begin with. But then you look at this year in a down market, and the numbers get eye-poppingly scary. So the S&P 500 for the year is down 22%. So it's been a brutal year for the market. We're down 22% if you own the index. The average investor, JP Morgan just published this last week, down 44%. Two times. Two times. Two times as much. Brutal. 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 is, Is it just the classic investors buy the top and sell the bottom? Is that just kind of Another it's a lot of that. Of that. Wow. It's a lot of that. So it's a lot of that. And then it is obviously what they buy as well. So, I mean, it, it, it's funny. So your brain is wired psychologically to be a bad investor. Your brain is wired back to the Darwinian days, whatever you want to talk about science, whatever it is, uh, it's fight or flight, right? So when things are scary, you either fight or you flight, right? And so re- generally what you have in the market is the flight period. So right. you had last year, this is a shocking, but true stat last year for 2021, It was obviously a very comfortable year to be in the market because it did nothing but go up and it never came down. So as it went up, it got very comfortable for people and more money came into the stock market last year than it did in the past 25 years combined. Oh, really? Wow. 2021, more money came into the stock market than it did for the prior 25 year period combined. Boy, that was bad timing. Yeah. Because then you fast forward to this year and it's obviously fallen off a cliff on the other side. And what do you have? Obviously, you've experienced the exact opposite side of that coin and you have people selling out of the market. And people do exactly what you shouldn't do. They buy high and sell low. You obviously want to buy low and sell high. But also you think about what people were buying last year. They were buying high flying tech stocks. They were buying crypto, et cetera. The thing about tech stocks that people don't understand, this is like, it's kind of funny to say this. I'll talk out of both sides of my mouth because people always say, buy what you know. And what do people know? They know Facebook. They know, you know, X, Y, Z. They know Tesla. They know this. They know that. They know they like these things. But also what you have with these tech stocks is a ton of interest rate sensitivity. So different than value stocks, value stocks don't have a ton of interest rate sensitivity. So people bought what they know, which happened to be all of those tech stocks, Microsoft, Apple, Tesla, on and on down the list. And when interest rates went up, tech stocks disproportionately get affected downwards. And so as things traded off, Peloton down 90%, um, Shopify down 90%, uh, Roku down 90%, Netflix was down huge at pop recently. But all of these things had the compounded effect of they were bought way too high and they were way ahead of themselves. And then interest rates flipped and the bottom got pulled out from underneath it. There's there's a couple posts that you can see out there on big sites that are talking about the 80% down club. The number of stocks in the 80% down club is brutal. And it's all names that you probably know and use every single day. Um, And it's, it's scary. Well, the other thing that I thought was really interesting about last year, and I put it out on my channel a couple of times and got hate for it was the meme stocks, AMC, Bed Bath & Beyond companies that were, were essentially zombies or bad operators. And they just kept banging the market. And every time the stock went up, uh, they just issued more stock. I'm like, you guys don't understand what they're doing. And then then AMC, I remember AMC trying to come to market with more shares and the shareholders said no. So then they create this stupid freaking dividend thing. Yep. yep. And I call it out. People are like, oh, what are you talking about? You don't know what's going on, old man, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you guys don't get it. You're just yeah. robbing you blind. Are you not paying yep. attention? Look back to the 1700s. This played out in tulips, tulip yeah. bulbs. You, you've heard the tulip bulb case study. Oh, yeah, of tulip course. Tulip bulbs at, at one point 
were were selling for the same price as a mansion in Dutch. In, 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 in the, Dutch, the Dutch were buying them at the same price. Rare tulips were being bought for the same price at a time as a local mansion was being sold for. It was one of those things where, again, it's just supply and demand. That's all it is. So if you drive up demand in the short term, whether it's artificial or real demand, yeah. And it can drive prices higher to a crazy degree, but this, and and then what happens inevitably is the bottom comes out. Like this is, this, we've seen this time and time again, when money gets too easy, too loose, because the Fed drops that of helicopters on people, which is what yeah. happened last year, they need to find a home for it. And yeah. the home is not always the most educated home where they put it to work. And this is what we saw play out last year. And it was a it was a, a bang up year in the upside. And then all of a sudden you have a bang up year on the downside. And the average investor has experienced two times as much downside this year as the S&P 500. It's crazy. I, I, yeah, I don't know if you, I'm, I'm sure you saw it. I don't know if you remember, but you remember David Portnoy? Yeah. Popping off that he that investing in stocks was easy. He's better than Warren Buffett. Bo- Warren better Buffett than Warren needs Buffett. to retire. He needs to retire. Yep. He was calling him out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that didn't end well. Did, did, have you seen like the most recent two minute video where they put together a compilation of it? I have of him. Oh, you got to look it up, man. It is hysterical. So they go through and he pops off like they just like five second segments about how great he is. And then all of a sudden, 2022 rolls around. He's throwing stuff. He's spiking stuff. Someone texts him. He's like, don't text me at the open, this and that. Um, so it, yeah, and, and, it, and it's not like fake stuff. It's 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 real, it's like real what life, he has yeah. actually experienced. Yeah, um, and, and I say this uh, smiling because I remember saying the same thing when I was up, when I turned seven grand into two, 7,000 uh, into almost 200. I'm in the like, early 2000s? Or the yeah, my, 90s, yeah, 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 the dot-com craziness. I'm like, damn, this is pretty good. And the fact I'm is, I did work, turned like seven into 40. Then I got cocky, did less work, 40 turned into 100. Then I did less work and started gambling. 100 went to 200. Then I just moved all my chips in, and then 200 turned into 40. Oops. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's tough. It's it's funny. So like last year, our company- I deserved it. We- it's not tough. I deserved yeah. everything. <laughs> I did, no, no that, that's a lesson in uh, arrogance and stupidity. I, I deserved that loss. I thought you were saying you deserve the upside. <laughs> oh, dude, I deserve the loss. No, I no. Yeah, don't you know feel what? bad you're, for me. You're better off now because of it, though, right? Oh, you're investing. Sure. I mean, yeah. and 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 that was at least when you began. That was relatively small money. Now you're dealing with bigger sums, and you're allocating oh, yeah. it much better than you were in the past. Oh, yeah. I, that's how I could spot David Portnoy's arrogance because I was that guy 20 years. <laughs> you're like, ago. I see, I see him in the I mirror. I know how that feels. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny though and, camera on you yeah I, i'll uh i'll like you know pat ourselves on the back i won't break my arm trying to do so but like last year in 2021 in the early part of the year like we have three conservative etfs they're managed conservatively they're diversified they're supposed to be boring as all hell we launched them and we had to set them up via the prospectus and what we could own which is it mandates it's conservative back in the spring of 2021 and we launched them in the fall of 2021. And people were looking at us and like, you guys are morons. We want yeah, what crypto. Are you doing? We want tech. We want, the last thing we want is boring asset allocation. What are you guys doing? And then obviously this year rolls around, the tide has turned some there. And people are like, okay, now I see what you're saying. There's something called now reversion to the mean. <laughs> Well, do me a favor. We don't do this. As a, in fact, I think we, if we do it once a month, it'd be, it'd be a lot. We don't do, I don't remember the last time we did it. What are the three ETFs? Yeah. So the three tickers are the first one is life goal wealth builder. That's W L T H. And that's just like, uh, you know, if you think about a financial advisor puts together a 70% stock, 30% bond portfolio, we do that and we mix in a little bit of commodities. So think about, again, like an overall broad basket. There's 40 holdings in there that give you a stock, bond, commodity, real estate exposure. And then there's a conservative version of that for stuff that's more intermediate term and time frame, like a place to put cash if you're thinking about something three to five years out somewhere in that ballpark is called the conservative wealth builder. That ticker is Savin, S-A-V-N. And then one that's totally different, nothing like it in the market, is the Life Goal Home Down Payment ETF. And that is specifically to have someone put money aside that they want to buy a house in the future with. And the, the interesting kind of tweak on that one is like, you know, like, what the heck is in that one? Like, why is that special besides for the name? The stock allocation that we have in there, half of it is weighted specifically to things that are directly affected by home prices or vice versa there. So like Home Depot and 
and Pulte Brothers, which is a home builder and Sherwin Williams Paint. Like if you know you're going to be using this stuff in the future, that should be in there as a hedge. Gotcha. And what's the symbol for that? I don't think we said it. That's H O M H O M. So home without H-O-M. the E. Very yeah. cool. Well, this has been a lot of fun. That. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Like, we don't do that very often. So you're, you're, you come back every week. So yeah, I, I'm happy to do it. <laughs> so Taylor, where can people follow you on Instagram? Because you are educating and entertaining people there every day. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, hopefully more of the former than the latter, but I am a goof. So there's, there's the, your, your, your entertainment portion of it. <laughs> no, find us at life goal investments at life goal investments on Instagram. We appreciate it. Of course. It's a great follow. Let them know you came from one rental at a time. Send them a DM. Thanks. Taylor. Yeah, they have, they have. So they already have been people have. Awesome. So thank you for that. Of course.